In this video, I'm going to introduce a few time series forecasting methods. They are simple moving average, weighted moving average, simple exponential smoothing, and double exponential smoothing. After that, I'm also going to introduce some of the uh, measurement of forecast accuracy. Let's start with the easiest scenario, simple moving average. In this example, I'm going to use a three-period simple moving average. In this case, you may also call that three-month simple moving average because the time period is month. Currently, we have the demand information from, say, last year and we are going to use three-month simple moving average to make forecast. Because it's three-period simple moving average, we need three historical demand data to make a forecast. As a result, the first forecast we can make is for April because we need information from January, February, and March. Let's see how it works. We can use a function in Excel, it's called average. Average of what? Average of historical demand from January, February, and March. And we get the demand forecast for April, which is 39.3. In Excel, we can simply drag it down and we get all the demand forecasts for the remaining months. Next, let's focus on three period weighted moving average. In three period simple moving average, we pretty much treat each of the previous three time periods equally. In weighted moving average, we are going to assign different weights for different time period. Here, let's assume W1 is 0.6, W2, 0.3, and W3, 0.1. As we can tell, the sum of all weights is equal to 1, and we are going to assign W1 to the most recent time period, and W2 to the second most recent time period, and so on and so forth. Now let's see how we are going to make forecast based on three period weighted moving average. Once again, we cannot make forecast for January, February, or March because we need three historical data to make one prediction. So the first one is going to be equal to W1 times the demand from the most recent period which will be March plus W2 times demand from February and plus W3 times the demand from January. And this is the demand forecast for April based on three period weighted moving average. Once again, we can drag it and make predictions for all the following months. Next, let's look at simple exponential smoothing. The formula is here, copied directly from textbook. As a matter of fact, there is a different version of the formula right here, and we can easily see that those two formulas are identical. Let's say in our example, alpha is giving, which is 0.2, and let's see how we're going to use the formula over here to make predictions. First of all, we are going to need a prediction or forecast for the first time period. Conventionally, we assume it's equal to the actual demand of the first time period. So we copy 37 here and paste it over here. Okay. Let's see how the formula works. Uh, the prediction for February is going to be equal to alpha, 
which is 0.2 in our case, times the actual demand of last time period, which will be January. So D1 and then plus 1 minus alpha times the previous forecast. Okay, let's give it a try. So it's equal to alpha is in B23, alpha times the actual demand of the previous time period plus 1 minus alpha times the forecast of previous time period. The second forecast is also 37 because actual demand and the predicted demand of the first time period are the same, 37. And then with the formula we just typed, we can simply drag it down and predict the demand for all the following months. This is how simple exponential smoothing works. Next, we are going to introduce the most complicated scenario double exponential smoothing. In our textbook, it's called adjusted exponential smoothing. In DES, we need two components to make a prediction. One is a base or base level, the other is trend. Based on those two elements, we can make a forecast. In our textbook, base is called forecast and the final forecast is called adjusted forecast. I use this notation for a reason because we are going to introduce a slightly different set of formula. This new set of formula will be a little more powerful than the one we see in the textbook. Indeed, the formula for calculating base level and trend are identical as the ones in our textbook. The real difference is in the last formula with which we make predictions. If we take a look at this formula over here, the prediction for time period t plus n is equal to the base level of time period t, which is most recent time period, plus n times trend in time period t. In DS, we need two constants, alpha and beta. Let's say alpha is 0.2 and beta is 0.1. And this method, FYI, is also called Holtz method. Now let's see how double exponential smoothing works. Very similar to simple exponential smoothing, we are going to assume that the first base level is equal to the actual demand of first time period. As a result, the trend will be equal to zero because 37 minus 37, it is zero. And next, we are going to calculate the base level for the second time period. It's equal to alpha times the actual demand of last time period plus 1 minus alpha times the base level of previous time period. It's not surprising at all that the second base level is also equal to the first one because the very first base level is equal to the actual demand of the first time period. Okay, next let's calculate a trend of February. It's equal to beta times the difference of base level 2 minus base level 1 plus 1 minus beta times previous trend. Okay, let's see how we can make predictions. 
if you look at our formula, the demand forecast for February will be equal to the base level in January plus air, which will be equal to 1, times the trend level of January. So in Excel, it's equal to F5 plus G5. Now we created the formulas for base trend and forecast. Next, we are going to use the trick of Excel to generate base trend and forecast for all the remaining time periods. And here it is. The reason I want to introduce this slightly different version of double exponential smoothing is that with this new formula, we can make many, many more predictions. For example, we want to predict the sales in January of next year. It's going to be equal to pretty easy. Base level of December plus trend of December as well. What if we want to predict the demand of February of next year? It's equal to, okay, right now we're in December, so the base level of December is 48 plus 2 times the trend of December. Because February of next year is two time period into the future. That's why n is equal to 2. Return. So the prediction of demand for January of next year is going to be 50. And similarly, we can predict the demand of March of next year. It's going to be equal to the same base level plus 3 times the trend of December, and so on and so forth. Next, I'm going to use the result I generated for double exponential smoothing to introduce a few measurement of forecast accuracy. Let me hide a few columns. Because the very first forecast is not available, so we can start from time period 2. First the thing we're going to calculate is called forecast error or error. It's equal to the actual demand minus your prediction. Second is absolute deviation or absolute error. Not surprisingly, it's equal to the absolute value of forecast error. The third item over here is called absolute percentage deviation. In some of the books, it's called absolute percentage error. It's equal to the absolute deviation divided by the actual demand. So we get actually a percentage, 7.5%. Last one is called squared error. It's equal to forecast error squared. Next, we generate a calculation for all the other time periods. Now, with the basic information over here, we can do a few things. First of all, we would like to find out about the cumulative error. That's easy to do. It's equal to the sum of all the forecast error we calculated earlier. So the cumulative error is 71. Average error is equal to cumulative error divided by time period. Keep in mind, we do not have forecast for time period 1. So we made 11 predictions. The average error is equal to 71 divided by 11, which is 6.45. And next, we can calculate MAD, or Mean Absolute Deviation. 
it's equal to the sum of all the absolute deviations divided by number of predictions we made, which is once again 11. Next, we can calculate MAPD or MAPE, which is mean absolute percentage error. It's equal to sum of all absolute percentage deviation divided by number of predictions 11. In the end, we calculate mean squared error. It's equal to the sum of all squared errors divided once again by the number of predictions. So we get MSE is equal to 57.